How's everybody doing this morning? I see we have 18 people here currently with 15 people registered. We'll give a few more minutes for people to jump in. Um, I'm Bobby. We'll introduce ourselves a little bit more, but where's everybody from? Maine. Wow. Ohio. Hamilton. North Carolina. New wow. New Jersey. Okay. Colorado. North Carolina again. Kansas. Wow. Massachusetts. Everybody from all over. Yeah, all over. Nice. Greenfield, Illinois. Illinois. Grand Forks. I do recognize some people that I've worked with personally. Scott, how you doing? Audrey, I've worked with you before. Grish, I remember you as well. Morning from Indiana. Nice. Look at all these people. This is exciting. I'll give it about another minute. This is cool stuff. You guys excited to be here? Get familiar with Time Click? Awesome. <laughs> New Mexico. Morning, Zach. Man, we have 22 people here so far. That's really good, especially for our first webinar. As you, if you guys don't already know, we'll get started here in a second. Um, this is our first webinar. We have not done one before. So you might see me stumble and try to figure some things out here. If I do, just laugh at me. Um, I'll be honest. I'm really nervous about this. I did not expect like, like 23 people coming in. Man. I agree, Scott. Yeah, you could always learn new information. And I'm hoping this is a good education for people. So, all right, let's start getting ready to talk about it. Um, we're going to be talking about the first slide here. We're going to get started with time click. And I appreciate it, Susan. I hope I have this. We'll see. <laughs> uh, this will be a demo of the time click software. So in the future, we are thinking about doing more webinars, uh, tech support, sales, things like that. Um, probably do a lot of tech support, I'd imagine, in the future. This one is primarily just for the demo. You can ask tech support questions. Kyle is here to answer them, um, as well as once the demo is over, we have Q&A that I can help as well. Um, this is for version 21, just so everybody knows. All right. Let's go ahead and get in some more information. So about us, we're time click. Uh, we're, all, we're also known as Hawkeye Technology. You might have seen that if you have the really old versions of us. Um, Hawkeye Technology was founded in 1977. At first, we focused on financial data processing for banks and small businesses. During the first few years, the company founder wrote a small in-house program to track his employees' times. He called this time clock program Timekeeper. As a result, the company and software evolved rapidly. Timekeeper grew up, so to speak, from a simple DOS time clock to what is now TimeClick, a powerful yet easy to use and attendant software. We released the first custom, uh, commercial version of TimeClick in 1993. Each new version of TimeClick includes dozen, dozens of requested features. And for those that have been with us for a while, you've probably noticed this, that we usually add several features as new version upgrades, uh, new versions become released every year. Um, our mission, is to develop and market time clock software that businesses like yours benefit. Uh, design products to improve and simplify time and attendance management, and just as importantly, provide first-class technical support and service to everyone we work with. Now, this is something we always try to do. Um, you guys are very important to us. I hope you realize that. 
uh, when do TC uh, plan to release the phone app? Uh, do you want to go ahead and answer that? Great question, Grish. And uh, I'll go ahead and let Kyle take care of that. Uh, today's goal to help everyone get familiar with our time click solution and how it can help you with time management. This is a basic demo showing the more commonly used features. So we'll have about an hour for the demo. Um, there are a, usually a demo can take like 10 minutes. I'm gonna be a little more, bit more detailed than normal. All right. Now here are the presenters, uh, myself, Bobby. I am the customer success manager and I'll be the one presenting the webinar. And you have Kyle, he is the customer success representative um, who most of you guys probably have interacted with as well. And he's usually on the front line. He's there to help you. Uh, he will be managing chat today. Here's our agenda. Our agenda shows the uh, main display settings that we'll talk about. Just the overall, what TimeClick looks like, what it does. Then we'll go into how your employees will use TimeClick. Then we'll go into how admin starts using time. So we'll talk about the dashboard, adding employees, modifying times, adding accrued times, backing up your database, which is very, very important. Uh, reports, setting up your mobile device. So this kind of goes along with what you're talking about, Grish, when, when you ask that question. And then, of course, q and I'm hoping to try to get as much time for Q&A as I can. Uh, but I also want to make sure I give a pretty good demo of what's going on. Everyone feel free to ask questions as, as you think about them. Like I guess that Kyle will answer them for the more difficult ones. Uh, those that want to wait for the Q&A, you can. Um, let me go ahead and I'm going to release a handout. It's the TimeClick demo worksheet documentation. Go ahead and download it. It just will help you follow along uh, with where I'm going. It's just five questions. Um, I will be answering those as I go. And then of course we'll go over at the Q and A. And while everybody's downloading the time click worksheet, I'm going to also release, um, some polls here that we have that way I kind of get to know you guys a little bit better. Um, the first is familiarity. You're going to see that I released a poll. I want to know how familiar you are with time click. Are you a beginner? Are you an intermediate? Or are you a master at this? So I'll give you guys uh, about two minutes for the download and answering the poll. Four years now. That's awesome, Garish. It's, I'm glad you bring that up because that's going to be the next poll I'm going to ask you guys here in a second as well. I'm going to make sure we have, we have 26 people, so I'm going to make sure everyone has time to download an answer. All right, let's see here. So we have two people that are new, beginner, and about 13 people so far that are considered intermediate. Nice. Cool, and that's kind of what I was hoping was a good mix. I want to be, I want this to be for new people and people that have used Time Clip for quite a while. Um, I do know, no matter how long they've been with us, um, our clients, I will still get questions. Um, regarding new features or just maybe an old feature I had that they didn't know about. Um, so I, I'm glad we have a good mix. Twenty years, Anita. Uh, I know okay, I've I've worked with you a few times, Anita. Oh yeah. Man, 20 years, you might be our, one of our most senior clients. All right, cool. So three new beginners, 15 intermediate, zero masters. I'm gonna go ahead and release another poll. Uh, the next poll, 
kind of goes along with Goresh and Anita. Uh, how long have you been a user of TimeClick? Have you been with us less than a year? Been with us between one and three years? I mean, or are we basically family? Are we been together long enough, right? All right. That is correct, Catherine. We were called Hawkeye uh, for quite a while. That's why in the, our old LE versions, you'll see it uh, in our folders that are on your computer. When you download TimeClick, you would have seen it say tech, Hawkeye Technologies versus TimeClick since like, I think, uh, 17. We've had, it w went over to Hawkeye labeling within the TimeClick software. Yeah, no, that's not a problem. Not a problem at all. All right. So users of time click. So we have two people less than a year, eight people between one and threes, and nine people. We're basically family. Awesome. Cool. Nice to see some of the family members here then. All right. Let's get started, shall we? I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, feel free to go ahead and maximize it if you want. Um, I kind of prefer that so you can have a better look and see what I'm doing. And uh, I'm sure you just don't want to stare at my face the whole time either. So, all right. So this is the main display of time click. Um, this is what you'll see when you open it up. You have your version number that's at the top. So anytime you guys if you have any issues or questions, we ask, hey, what version are you on? You're unable to maximize. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Is that better, Carmen? Okay. So that was my fault. Cool. Awesome. Sounds good. Sorry about that, y'all. Okay. So we have the old version top or the, the version number on the top left-hand corner. Um, so when we ask you guys, if you guys call in to troubleshoot, this will be what we usually ask. Because sometimes, depending on the version number, will depend on not just the version, but the patch. When we say patch, we're talking about like 2.0.2, .2, right? We want to know because sometimes certain patches have bugs, and sometimes the solution is just updating to the newest version. Um, then, of course, you have time click here. This should be the server time. Um, you'll notice that I have the gray icon. The gray icon is the server. The blue icon is the workstation. Um, the latest version, I think one was released recently. Give me one second and I can actually let you know, Garish. So this is, it would be, this is the one I have now is 2.0.2. .2, should be the latest version. Um, so then you have your server time and then you have the date. So your workstation should ideally mirror this um, and that'll be the, the kind of information that you see here so the this will be the display with your employee list the status the time the date any comments that they make you'll have uh you can sign into admin up here most people don't use it um registration info if you have any questions about it this shows you the the connection to the server so on a workstation this will show your ip address that you're connected to um, the server will always show local host though. You have your view. So this is the maximize, minimize of the window, the feedback. So if you guys have any questions, bugs, uh, any, any feedback you guys want to give us at all features, we're doing a good job. Uh, this would be where you go. You send this feedback, it automatically emails it to time, uh, support at timeclick.com. Then you have your help. So you can check for updates here or the update button will normally be above the admin button. Then you have the time click manual, which is should be the newest one. I recently redone that for everybody. So that is available. You visit our website, you visit our frequently asked question page. That's not all the way updated. I will be working on that just so people know. You can contact us and then you can just know more about time click. But you'll see there'll be an update button here. This will be the admin, which you hit. 
Um, if you have a message from one of your employees, you'll notice that there's a little message dot here. All of this information should update automatically every five minutes. If um, you need to look at information sooner, it for that for the times it doesn't do it automatically and you want to refresh it, just hit this refresh button. That's what it's there for. Now on the bottom portion, uh, this could be where you're going at Carmen. Um, where if you can't see the column, this could be part of it, or it'll be on another section that I'll talk about when I go to the display settings. We'll kind of talk about that and setting that up. Uh, so hopefully they'll answer your question as we go. Um, you have all employees. You can choose the drop down if you have it set for departments. So you can see who's in accounting, development, technical support on this side. We do get this question a lot from everybody uh, that, oh, I don't see all my employees. Check this drop down right here. Make sure it says all employees or it's dedicated to the department that you're in. And then if the display is disabled, which you can do, and I will show you guys, um, you can also type in a name and the password here if a password is set for an employee. Now, let me go ahead and show you how the employees will use TimeClick. You have one of the names here, and they'll find their name, or they can type it in if they like. And they can either click it, and it should be able to hit go, or just double click it, which is just much easier. And then you can they can pull up their employee clock menu. You're going to see... Evan here has, he's in two departments. He's in advertising and he's in tech support. He'll also have job codes, which we'll talk about that a little bit, but these are different things that he does within that uh, a specific department. Um, or in general, if there's a certain job that they work in, they might not be departments as well. They could just be jobs. Then um, you'll notice that it's already highlighted on the next status that they should be clocked that they it, that they should do. So it's currently the status is clocked out. So it should automatically highlight the next thing. So they don't have to click it. It should automatically click OK. They can comment so that way it'll appear here. Like say, hey, I forgot to clock in. I'm clocking in late. They can put it there. If you have breaks enabled, which we'll get to, um, that would appear here as well. It would be right up in between clocking in and clock out. And then, of course, you have, um, it'll tell you if you're approaching OT, how many hours you have left to overtime, how many hours you've clocked in this week, and it'll fill this bar up so that way the employee will know. This shows them any unread messages that they have. And then they'll hit launch employee options. Now, this is very dependent on what you have set up for your employees. Um, if you have them set up underneath the employee preference in the admin tab, which we'll discuss, they'll have more or less options here. So they have the message. They can create messages. Um, they can reply. Now, here is a big thing that a lot of people didn't realize this here is that they can submit a missed action. So, like, hey, I forgot to clock out. They can submit the action to admin. It goes to admin. I mean, can, from their message can uh, section, they can then approve it. Then you have submit time request. Uh, submitting time request. This is like PTO, vacation, sick time, etc. Then go here. They can submit it once again. The the admin or the department manager can approve it. Uh, once they approve it, it will let them know. If they deny it, it will then let them know if they if the manager wants them to know. Um, Time request when it comes to PTO and vacation, it will, when they go to ask for it, you'll notice it should actually show them what hours are available if you have their crew time set up or everything's input, uh, inputted into the software. They can choose from a date range, they can choose the duration, and they can send a message to the admin, maybe, hey, uh, my family's going out of town. We're going here. We'd like to take a vacation at this point. Um, just kind of go back a little bit. The missed action time request, it looks like this. Um, it's the department that they're in, their job, 
Once again, they missed. Hey, I forgot to clock in. I forgot to clock out. All right. Next is the dashboard, which, as you kind of saw previously, it's just as they clock in or out, it's going to be there. It's the same exact thing. The only difference is they can turn around and they can see um, specific dates. Yet, the, uh, if this is set up for the employees, we'll talk about the admin section, but the employees can also run reports on themselves if they're interested and if this is enabled. Uh, this is all their accrued time. They can filter the range, see what's used, see what they have left um, in their balance, just to kind of see how things are set up. So, for example, this person gets uh, their accrued time happens every one year uh, hourly. You can also submit a time request here. And then the last part they'll see is their settings. If you have it set, you have, they have their schedules, the clock in, clock out buffer. This lets them know, hey, you can't clock out or you can't clock in any earlier than five minutes. Can't clock out any later than five minutes or whatever it is that you set it to. Department, they can, this is where they will change their password if they want to change their password manually. So this way you don't always have to do it. Any way to make the screen bigger? Um, I can only see what I have on my side when I have increased it for you guys. I'm not sure if there's another way, Kyle. I don't know if, you, if you're able to tell from your screen. This is the first time we're using um, this webinar, so I'm not sure, Zach. I apologize if it's small. Um, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Um, if, ever, if there's anyone else that has figured it out, feel free to put it in chat and let Zach know as well to see if, uh, if there's a way to make it bigger. Um, I'll try to go over it a little bit more in detail for you too, Zach. If there's something you miss or you want to see, and this goes for anybody, let me know, and I'll be happy to you know just kind of go back, especially within Q&A, we have that opportunity. All right, so now we have admin. I don't have the admin password set up here, but... If you have it set up, you can put in the admin password. Uh, versus people are long for our longtime users. There used to be uh, a restricted admin that's still here to where they're limited. Uh, admins are limited. Just so you know, that is here. Admin launch restricted admin, or if it's set up, then you can turn around and it'll be. Let's say we go to Darren here. It'll it should be here as an uh, admin and they just put in their password, not the admin password for it. But anyway, so I'm, I'm in admin. We are now in the dashboard section. This will be what you see. Now, the main default of the dashboard will be messages. You can change that in your settings. So if you'd rather see um, the report center first thing, you can set it that way. Um, that'll be in preferences. We will get to that. Um, but anyway, so kind of the same thing of what you saw with the employees message section. If you, there's a new message, you can see it. You can read it. Can you forward this goal uh, goals for the week over to me? You can reply to them. You can send it to multiple people by department or by the job. Now, you can mark a message as urgent. Urgent, basically, it will pop up before they clock in or out. So it makes sure that they see it. You can mark unread, delete, all the normal stuff. Now, you have your dashboard reports. Not many people that I've noticed and I've worked with use these features. I don't know if it's because people don't know about it, but you can see a weekly snapshot. We'll just pull up, generate a report just to show an example. This is how close people are to overtime and what they've worked for this week, or in this case, this current pay period. You have your functionality uh, with punctuality. It will show how many people have been late early on time. You can change the size. There's a lot that you can do here. Definitely play with it. You have your attendance, uh, how many are absent, how many are present. And then you have your payroll projection. So this one can be a little tricky. Just so you guys know, you have to set it up when we go to adding employee uh, here next. I'll show you. But you have to set a pay scale of what you're paying people for this to kind of be a little bit more accurate. 
but this will kind of give you an idea and a projection of what they will be making. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump into employees. You'll click the employees on the left hand side. Here you have um, your employee list. This is where you can include terminated employees, people who are no longer with the company, but they are, um, the records are still here in case you need it. We don't only recommend deleting anybody. You have unlimited people, um, mainly for legal purposes. But you will you can edit by clicking their name, double click it, hit edit, edit their information here. And we'll go back just so you guys can see. Uh, I want to show you the process of creating a new employee. Uh, and so you guys know I'll also, edit this is where you would add or edit departments and job codes. Make sure they're enabled. And we're going to go ahead and create a new employee because if they're not, I wouldn't show you guys that first because it's not enabled, then you're not going to have the ability to put it in. So you can put in a picture for an employee. You can make sure the employee ed info is checked. Put in all the, all the information. If you want them to have a password, this is where you put it. Now, the employee ID is just a number that's automated with time click. It's not anything special. You can change their ID number if you have companies that have IDs if you'd like. And of course, you have the employee type. Are they full-time? Are they part-time? Are they temporary? Are they salary? And this is where you assign them to a department or a job code. Once again, you got to make sure job codes are enabled or it's not going to work. You can hit previous or next if you want to go to the next employee um, or once again, the previous one. This is their detailed info now. This is where you want to put extra information if, about the employee. And kind of what I talked about earlier with the payroll projection, we're going to hit payroll info. Okay. This is, you want to make sure this is selected. You can add their social security number, their hourly rate, and their salary here. Um, if you don't have that information in there, it's either not going to show in payroll projection or it's not going to be nearly as accurate. For time, um, we have, you can edit the values if you need to adjust it. Manually, there is a, you can set a cap. And this is kind of where you'll go and choose the categories. You can create a category where I kind of show you that. I'm going to kind of speed up a little bit. We have like 33 minutes-ish. Uh, I want to make sure it times for Q&A. But if I go too fast, let me know. Uh, but you can set these categories about how often they accrue the times for vacation, sick, and PTO. These are your employee restrictions, so it lets them know what they can and can't do. Um, so if you want that, don't want them to earn overtime, you check it, you hit OK. If you want to make them a restricted admin, this is where you set it. So remember where I said where they have all the different tabs? Um, you can go there, and this is where they'll be able to see which tabs they have access to and what time actions they can do. And I have had a question from a few of you uh, that they don't see an employee on report. This is where you go. You'll, you need to make sure that this shows include employees on report and then hit OK. Clock schedule, if you want to set this, you can. You have the auto lunch deduction. So if, if they work a certain amount of time, you do that this, this amount of minutes. Um, you can calculate it by the day total or the clock period. You, then you have the employee schedule. You have a general day schedule or you can set schedules for individuals. This way you could set that buffer if you need to. And you can do it as a one size fit all and apply it to multiple employees or all employees. Even base it on departments and jobs if you want. All right. Now, when you have an employee, I'm going to go back to one that... Um, we already have, but you'll see there'll be an option. Let's see here. It is not showing. Sorry about this. There we go. Taking a second. So it's not showing right now, um, but that's because he's currently working. Now, you can delete the employee here, uh, which, like I said, we normally don't want to do, but... I might need to refresh uh, the app. I've had the I have had the software for quite a while this morning, but usually there's a button here that if you if you are terminating an employee, that's where you would press that button. Okay, modifying times. This is uh, 
editing clock in and out. Go here. You can choose by inter uh, terminated, all employees, double click or click, and then modify employees time. And this new will here, choose the dates. Now, if you run in a report or you see any red dates here, uh, and the running report, like if there's an error that pops up, this is where you'll go to correct that action. And you'll just hit add or edit action, delete action, whatever it is you need to do. You can change the dates or by per pay, uh, pay period. Click add action, edit the information. You Now it's the vacation. You have to click. You'll notice the change. You'll have to click here, and you can choose what type of time action. It's whether it's vacation, sick, PTO, holiday, et cetera. All right, I'm going to go back one. Mass entry. So like say it's Christmas or it's New Year's and you want to just set everybody up all together, that you can do that here. Um, you can set up a mass entry by a specific date for whatever reason or the holiday. Uh, you can just kind of here, you know, Merry Christmas, everyone. And they'll see the comment and you can include everyone or specific people. Next, you can edit. So if you realize, oh, I put in the wrong date or wrong time or whatever, you can edit those mass entries. So that way you're not having to do them individually. Accrued time. So this is how you'll set it up. You'll need to make sure it's enabled. You'll select a category. You can choose which one you want to set it up right now. It's all yearly. You can edit it. Hourly, pay period, annually, monthly, hourly, uh, sorry, monthly, I believe, is the, one of the newer features where you couldn't do in the past. You can now do that. You can choose how much they accrue, a specific date, or it's going to usually be um, when they were hired. And then you'll just choose the person, and then you can just set it however and hit update employee. Now, if you create one, we will go back here. Let's see, and create a category. You'll choose what type it is, and then you'll just set it accordingly. Setting up mass entry for full-time employees. Um, you can do it, like you say, if you set up a job code for full-time and versus part-time. Um, or even temp jobs, you can, I would recommend that would be the way that you would do it would be to set up a job code and then set it within that employee. And then you could do a mass entry that way. That's how I would do it. Going back to accrued time, you can, uh, like, so if people were saying, Hey, I, I set in a, I put in time. Hey, um, a good example is I asked for this day off. And it got approved. This is well where it will show you if it got approved, if any need to be approved, or if there have been any requests that this is where if they need to be approved. And this will show if it has been approved, uh, what dates it was approved on. Then you have your hourly accrued time awarded. Um, the instructions are basically here. You'll follow the instructions. Um, basically, once you have set up your accrued time categories, and you make sure there's no error on the employee's hours or report. You can choose the date range and hit this. Now, if successful, you will see the new entry on the top of your history list. So it will show up right here. And then you can also check in the crew time history, which we were before, or delete it if you need to. And they are. this will basically accrue time based on their hours work. It will just go ahead and automatically uh, give them that accrued time they've earned. All right, utilities. Um, this is where we're going to talk about backing up your database. So um, backing up the database, you can hit backup now to get the newest backup. It will create what's currently there. Uh, now you can import your database. This is where for transferring data. Uh, and if you need to use it when you import, uh, or sorry, importing is when you're transferring data into export is when you have to unregister and export to another computer. Then you have auto backups. We recommend everybody setting up a new feature uh, with between 20 and 21 is now that workstations have this feature 
not just the servers. So you can enable, you need to enable the database. You can choose where you want the folder. Keep in mind, um, this will not work for external drives and this won't work on network drives. You can either click folder, set directory, set it here, how frequent, you can make sure the time click service is up and running. If it's not running, you need to go to services, enable it. We can show you guys how to do that if you run into an issue. It's not running. It's not going to create the auto backup. And this just removes, like, say, the third backup that it automatically does. So that way you kind of have maybe the, the newest three backups. And the, all this can be edited. Your managed licenses. So if you ever get uh, an error that says, hey, you, you've hit your license limit. This is where you go. All you'll do is we recommend you just hit select all and reset check licenses. That way, anytime you go to uh, log in a time click, it will automatically pick up a license. Uh, manage connections, just as kind of listen and shows you uh, your but databases. You can enter the IP address here. If you need to change the IP address, this is usually for your IT people. Um, let's see, Kyle, if you want to go ahead and grab those questions for me. Um, Current database that shows you once again, kind of up here, what you're currently connected to. And then your audit tool. So if people are modifying time, you can check by modify times or computer log. If people are modifying things and you kind of want to get an idea of who's been doing it, you can get that here. Uh, 24 minutes, just kind of let everybody know. I'm we're still going to speed up. Kyle's going to answer your questions. Whatever's not there or he's not able to answer, we'll do during Q&A. So we get a lot of questions here, reports, this is a big one. If you run a report and a red error pops up, that's where you need to go fix the modified times. You can choose different types of reports. Uh, the most two common two are the hours report and the summary. The sum summary just gives obviously just an overall quick view of things. Usually um, people who do payroll, this is what they ask for. I'll kind of show you a little bit of each. Um, you can choose the dates. You can select individuals, departments, same thing. Um, now here you can have a default setting and then just automatically change things if you if you change it frequently or you can create a new custom preset so that means you can name the preset choose anything that's here there's a lot when you hit the event settings there's a lot you can do and then you can make it the default preset so you don't have to do this every time um, but anyway so i'm going to show you what uh, you uh, hours report looks like. You can save as PDF, CSV. I'm going to view report. Um, I have it set up as PDF instead of Google Chrome. So you'll kind of see everything here. Gives you a more detailed view of the days that were selected, the employees that are here, their hours, um, even goes by department and jobs. So that's kind of what uh, the a basis default report would look like unless you modify or change anything. Um, commonly question asked, can you include them on different lines, uh, sorry, different pages? You can here. New page for each, this is where you go. That's a common question we get. Um, then you have the summary report. Once again, it's there's a lot of information, not as much as the hours report. Um, You'll hit view report and you'll get the summary. So just a quick overall view. Uh, Susan, uh, how do you run a report to see vacation hours used? That would be the accrued time history report. You'll click that here, edit, do accrued time balances, current accrued time, whatever you want to do, you'll hit view report there. And it'll kind of give you an overall view. A lot of these people don't take, haven't taken vacation or sick time or anything like that. So you're not going to you set, set David here, used, approved, date processed, hours and minutes, total use. So this is where you'd find that, Susan. All right. So next, payroll reports. So this is where if you're going to do payroll integration, um, we do, we don't, we're, we're so we're we have passport and quickbooks pro here um you guys have may have gotten questions from us about uh new payroll stuff um right now this is where you'll go you'll hit launch payroll integration center important thing is lot that when you launch the payroll integration center this is not your computer or your time click 
admin or password information. This will ask you, you'll have to create, for new people, you'll have to create a new account. And then when you create the new account, that'll be the information that you use. We do get that question a lot. All right, preferences. So um, this is the general preferences tab. This is where you can change your admin passwords. If you ever have a question on where to change it, this is where to go. You can require them to quit password, uh, to an admin to put in a password to quit the program. So that way people aren't closing it. They don't have, you know, that you don't want it closed if you have a dedicated computer for it. This is where you enable breaks. So kind of what I talked about earlier. Uh, you can decide if breaks are paid or unpaid. Now the organization name would be your company name, the account holder email, and then if you if you have a computer nickname, you can put it here. Now this does not go if you change anything here, it doesn't go on our records on our software. Just so everyone knows, this all this does is it will show up on reports for you. So don't worry about oh is it going to affect my account with time click right here it will not. Um, earlier okay so. Uh, I believe it was Carmen uh, that asked, someone asked earlier about not having columns. I believe it was Carmen. This is where you want to go. Once again, it's preferences, display. With the display, um, you can choose what columns are here. As you, I hit date, comment, as you can tell here, it's added or being subtracted to it. You can turn off the display so it'll be gray, and they have to put in their name here if you want them to do that. Uh, so that is an option. Um, you can set it for every workstation or apply these actions to specific workstations. Either way, you can change the font size. You can limit the display to individuals. So you want to limit it to, to specific departments. Only people in that department can see it. Um, now, this is a new feature we have. It's our time click theme. Your friendly neighborhood time click, that's our light version. Then we have our dark version, which is the dark side of time click, right? So it does take just a quick second, loads up. This is our dark theme. And then, of course, any anything you do here, you want to hit save. Uh, pay period no, and overtime. Now, we do get a lot of these type of questions there. Um, this is where we normally take people. We ask, hey, what kind of pay period you have. The the, pro, the one that we usually have more issues with is your semi-monthly. Um, semi-monthly, it depends on the period a, uh, that you have it set up for the date. Um, you can set it for last completed or current pay period if you go to viewer as a report. But your overtime is really depending on uh, what your pay period preferences are. A lot of people do semi-monthly. Semi-monthly does become very confusing. Um, so once again, you do, if you guys have issues, this is probably where we're going to take you. Um, you just want to make sure the settings are correct and they'll reach out to us. Usually it's uh, semi-monthly will depend on where you start for overtime. I've seen some people have it set for Tuesday or Wednesday when it should probably start on a Sunday or Monday for most people. And of course you can set overtime type and set the hours and minutes. However you want to do it. If you offer do double time, that is here as well. Now, this is our new mobile feature that we've talked about, Garish. So if you have Time Click 21 and you have the unlimited support plan, you have to have the unlimited plan to have access to our mobile. The only thing our mobile does right now is clocking in or out. Uh, that includes breaks. Um, it doesn't have reports feature or anything like that yet. We are talking about doing more features in the future. If you guys ever have suggestions for feature, please hit that feedback button that we mentioned up here and send it to us or just email us at support at timeclick.com. Let us know. We want as much feedback as we can get. Um, so Jessica, I will be answering that question here in just a second. Um, so once this is set up, you'll have to hit the enable mobile feature. You'll create the username and remote password and they'll have to sign in when they download our app. Um, they download our app. It does work on iPad, iPhones and Android. Um, you'll need this username and password. There'll be a public or private option. Private means they will only see their name. Public means they'll see everybody. Um, so it really depends on how they want to do it. And we always recommend use this service time for all mobile devices. If you see it's not syncing, we have seen that a few times. Just come in here, 
click this button a few times and hit save and it should be fine. Um, but once again, if that continues to happen, let us know. Um, but the, if they have it in public setting, they'll see everything that you see here on the left-hand side uh, of the dashboard. Advanced setting, if op, admin options, initial tabs. So this is where, uh, what's the first tab you want to see when you open up time click uh, under admin. I have it says mass messages. You can also do reports, modify times, or the report center. And this is time action. So if you want, you can't delete these. I do get questions on that. Um, but if you want to just edit one, you can. You include OT calculations, or if you just want to set it as the account for attendance, for presence, you can. You can include inactive actions. Um, now, a lot of people have been creating a new time action, uh, basically for COVID. You can go in here, type COVID, have all this set up. You want to make sure it's active. If it's not active anymore, so they don't see it as an option, just click this. And uh, then if you want to see it again on the side, you can hit include in active options. Now, Jessica, this, this next part will be for the account. So um, I will save our settings. So now... If you want to know how you have a support plan and which one, there are a few things. You can give us a call, you can chat us on our website, or you can turn around, send us an email, or check here. So if you have time click 21, it'll tell you how many devices you have, if this is the server or the workstation. So once again, how many licenses you have and uh, what version you're currently on. Your subscription, so that you can also modify your subscriptions here. You can purchase a year of time click support. And here, when you go in here, it will tell you um, what plan you have. If you have just a normal support plan or the unlimited. For everyone to know the difference, this normal support plan is just you're covered for the year. You pay a yearly fee, not monthly, not a, uh, per employee like most other software. You'll just turn around and um, the support plan, when you call in, it covers free support. So when you jump on your computer, there's no $89 charge per issue. It's just a support plan. You call us twice for most of the plans, you're, and we have to jump on, you're done. Like we've, you've, you've made, it has already started saving you money. And there's no cap on how many times you need to call us and get us. We're always here for you. Um, we can, and this covers us jumping on your computer. Me personally, you'll notice for those that I've worked with, I prefer jumping on a computer, especially if you have a plan, because um, it's just easier. I like to see what's going on before I can kind of work with it. Because sometimes, and I'll be honest, people don't always explain what I'm looking for. Uh, I look the, like the way I think it's, I have to just look and, and look, uh, go on it and play with it. Um, we do have a support article page, which we'll get to. Um, as well. But Jessica, this is where you'll go and you'll see what support, what plan you have. Support plan, just cover support, unlimited plan, the support feature, plus you get free upgrades. Now we are thinking about trying to add more value to the uh, unlimited plan for you guys. Uh, I am actually looking for that feedback. So if you guys have feedback, send me an email, support at timeclick.com. We want to know what you guys value. And we're trying to provide more value for that. For that way, um, you guys enjoy having the plan a little bit more. Um, and then you have your payment method. So you can add a payment method, edit payment method. So if you need to edit your card, oh, my card's expired or it's about to expire. I need to go in. You can call us, of course, but you can go in here yourself and manage it. All right. So that is it on the time click demo, everybody. Um, if you have any questions, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up my. Yeah, I can go ahead and review on how to do an update. Sure. So uh, what happens is if there is an update available, it should automatically say available update above admin. Or you can check and go to help here and check for the update. Um, now, what will happen is for the server, it, basically what, the way it goes is it'll delete the old version and install the new, ver, uh, new version. 
When I say virgin, I mean the past virgin. So uh, you can do 19 to 20, for example, or 19 to 21. But if you're within 21, like you have uh, template 2021.0.0.0, it'll just update the version number as well. So it'll be the newest version uh, and patch um, for the server. And then, of course, you can do the same thing on a workstation. Now, if your workstation and your server aren't, uh, the same version, you might get a mismatch error. So you need to see which one's on the latest version and then upgrade all your other computers accordingly. All right. Do we have any other questions for uh, on how to do things for the demo uh, that I've shown uh, or just any questions in general at all? Um, Anita, uh, and I'm just going to kind of go up for questions that I see. Anita, is it recommended the employee put their vacation time in? You don't have to, but if you want a record of it with time clip, we recommend using the software to do it. Looks like uh, Kyle answered Susan's question about the reports. Uh, and same thing as Hedva looks like. Um, all right. Cool. Are there any other questions? I'll kind of lead this up a little bit before I go back over to my slides. I'll give you guys another minute or two. We do have nine minutes left, so feel free to ask any questions you want. And um, while you're thinking of questions, if you have any questions at all, I'm going to throw up a few more polls. Uh, the first one will be, do you want to see more webinars from TimeClick? Um, heck yes. Or you didn't like the way I do it or just didn't enjoy the webinar. You can go ahead and tell me stuff while you're ahead. <laughs> so um, are you guys going to do a webinar on accrued time? Uh, what kind of, what specifically are you asking for accrued time, Grant? Uh, and the modify uh, for Scott in the modify times when you go in and do an action, you can add a category such as EST or can you add a category such as EST or extended sick time? Um, that's a good question. Um, for the category or for or like a time action, you can kind of do something similar, but for the category, you cannot. It's just what's there. You can name it a category if you want. Like there's, you could tweak it but I don't think it'll work the way that you'll want it to work, to be honest, Scott. Uh, Susan, do any update, do updates only return to the version you have? Um, no, you can also update to the latest version as well. Um, if you need to update to the latest version and it, and it only does the patch at times, it depends on how the devs have it set up. Um, you can just go to our website, timeclick.com forward slash download and just get the latest version. I mean, there'll be a server or a client button. Uh, just setting up the whole crew time system, learning how it works. Uh, thanks for the feedback grant. We will consider that. We are trying to get ideas on what other webinars that we're going to do. We definitely want to do tech support based webinars. Um, I'm not sure if there's like, if we want to dedicate, like how long we want to dedicate to specific issues. I kind of want to do um, a more overall approach if possible. Um, Catherine, just a general tutorial on using the crew time would be great. Uh, okay. Yep. So, uh, any questions specific about crew time that you're wanting to know, Catherine, uh, Zach, is there any possible way to link our time clicks from other offices? We have three different offices with our own time click server. Zach, no, there's not. We normally don't recommend having, uh, the same time click. You'll notice it people will tend to do a VPN or they'll do port forwarding. That's something we can't help troubleshoot because it has been known to have issues. Once again, we don't recommend it. Usually we just have you purchase a new time clip for a different office. We have been getting um, questions on and feedback on maybe merging databases. So maybe that's possible in the future. I don't know. Um, Jessica, we have not updated to our new version. Yeah, my two guys attempting that, but running to some issues that we we're trying to find out if we have a support plan. Um, Jessica, if you want to put in the name of your business on here, uh, Kyle, you want to look it up for it and see what kind of plan she has, please. 
Um, if it says no updates, then at that point, Susan, yeah, just go to timeclick.com forward slash download. Go to the top. As long as you once again, as long as you have the unlimited plan, it's free. Go to the top. You will see server and uh, client. Click it accordingly, whether you, if it's on your workstation or the server, yeah, and make sure the drop down says the latest release that should be there. Um, Jessica, okay, time click 12. Yeah, you'll definitely want to update. That's an older version. We actually don't support the the ver uh, version 16 and back. So if something were to happen, we don't want you to lose your database. That's where I, we want you to have the unlimited plan and get you updated to the latest version. Uh, Anita, in preferences, I try to add Saturday hours. We pay specific premium those hours. Can I set this up to subtract the Saturday hours from the total hours? Anita, to do that specific thing, uh, Kyle could correct me, but I don't believe we have a way to do that. I could be wrong. That's a, that's a question where I would actually need to get one-on-one, -on -one, me or Kyle, with you and get within our software, jump on your computer and kind of take a look. Awesome, Jessica. Yeah, we definitely want you on the newest version. I'm glad you're enjoying the update. That's another reason why we're doing the demo, because we do want people on the latest. Gloria, I have two employees who feel their accrued time is incorrect or missing. How can what is best to troubleshoot that? Um, I would ask them, like, uh, you can go back on the actually, so you can go back and see their accrued time history. Deduction approval tab. So admin accrued time, deduction approval. You can kind of look and see if they put in a request and if that request was actually accepted. Um, that's how you would go and see if it has been done. You can also run a report for the accrued time. So report center, accrued time history report. Um, and then if you need to edit it, you'll just go to accrued time. Uh, sorry, you're going to employee, choose the employee, accrued time and you can manually edit it if you want there. Audrey, it'd be nice to have a button on employee editing that will automatically put in the time to eight hours for six. Thanks, Audrey. Can you uh, send us that feedback to support at timeclick.com, please? So that way we can submit that. Okay, if that's not working with us, uh, I need to definitely give us a call or send us an email or chat. Chat's always the best way to get to us. I tell everybody, timeclick.com. There's a chat in the bottom right-hand corner. We get to you much faster than over the phone. We do get busy from time to time. All right. So, yeah, not a problem, Chris. Before you go, let me let everybody know that we do have an offer going on right now. It is 10% off. So if you've been with us, if you were here and you stayed for the full part portion of the webinar, click there, and this will get you 10% off for new customers um, for packages. If you're a previous customer, Talk to us. Let us know that you were here at the webinar. If you're looking to upgrade and you need to pay for a version upgrade or license upgrade, we'll work with you. So just let us know. Okay. And I'm going to throw, I'm still going to answer some questions, but I'm going to throw a poll out uh, before people start leaving. Um, I want to know how you found us. Um, just so you know, for people that want to see more webinars from time click, I did get seven that said, heck yes. Nobody told me to stop while I was ahead. So that's good news. Um, but yeah, how do I find us? I want to know if it's social media or email. So that I want to be able to start marketing appropriately and letting everybody know, um, give you guys more of a heads up as well, and maybe let you guys know as often. But yeah, thanks for coming, Chris. We appreciate it. All right. So um, if there's no other questions, I'll leave this up for another two minutes. You have the worksheet. Um, now, the answers to the worksheet, if we can go over that real quick. Um, the first question was employees ask for day off by selecting, and it was a blank. Now, the correct answer to that would be the select time request admin button. So you click here, and you go to launch employee options and submit time request to admin. Now, your registration number for TimeClick 21, I'm um, sorry, I did. I thought I went over this, but I guess I didn't. If you get to 21, you'll need a registration code. Um, it will be emailed to you. Um, to have the, and if you don't get the email, check your spam junk, let us know. We can get it for you as well. If you have the mobile option active, you need to have time the TimeClick Unlimited plan. Okay. You can change the view of your dashboard within the Preferences tab. So we kind of talked about that. Admin preferences you can change the display view here okay. now to save a manual report 
select create new customer preset in the drop down menu. So that means report center, how to report or hours report pres uh, presets, create new custom preset. All right. Great job, everybody. I do have uh, one more piece of information to give you. I'm going to bring up my, I'm going to change my layout so you guys can see. I'm just going to bring this back up again, get it to the latest. Now, this is our contact info, everybody. Now, we're open 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Our phone number is 435-753-4102. You'll press 1 for sales, trials, and subscriptions. Press 2 for customer success, so basically tech support. Um, you'll email us at support at timeclick.com or, or, or sorry, sales at timeclick.com accordingly. The most thing I recommend contacting us is through email or chat. Chat, timeclick.com. But I put bottom left, but it's actually the bottom right icon, uh, right icon on the page. Um, we'll probably get to you within like seven seconds. If we miss your chat, honestly, it's probably because we're in a meeting or something, which I apologize for. Our knowledge base, these are help articles. So if we're not online, um, it's outside hours. You can go here, timeclick.com forward slash knowledge dash base. This will show you your features, how to transfer databases, tech articles if you're seeing errors, so more of the common stuff. So all this information is here. Feel free to take a screenshot. Um, all right. Yeah, thanks, Scott. I do appreciate it. Um, we'll definitely let everybody know. I think the next one, we're not sure, but to give you an idea, I think we're considering tech support as the next, and I'm just... I'll probably just answer the most common questions and then just do a big Q&A is kind of the idea. But give me some feedback. Let me know if that's kind of what you want to hear or what kind of webinars you guys are wanting to see. Feel free to shoot me an email on that. Uh, support at timeclick.com. All right. Yeah, not a problem. I'm glad everybody came. I'm glad you guys have enjoyed it. I'm glad we have so many people. So it was definitely fun. Uh, you're looking for an HRM that has time click in and out. Can your version be interpreted in with other softwares? Uh, Headbutt, no, it's not integratable with other software. I don't know if that's a feature we're going to have, um, but we can put in that feedback. So, all right. So, yeah, um, I'm glad this was informative. I'm glad people are, are enjoying it. Um, I'm glad I didn't really have a lot of technical stuff fail that I thought was going to happen within the webinar. So uh, once again, you have that discount code. Uh, if you if it's something other than a new package, let us know uh, that you're in the webinar with us. We're happy to help. We don't have a problem with that. Um, and then, yeah, how do we find us? So we had two people say social media, six answered with email. Awesome. All right. So I appreciate the feedback that everyone gave. Uh I'm sure the, the webinar will save the chat, so I'll have it. Also, so you guys know, in a few hours, it will save the video, and it will also email it out, especially for those that have missed the webinar. So thank you. I appreciate it, everybody. I appreciate the, uh, the positivity that you guys are sending my way. All right. Well, y'all have a wonderful day. Thanks for coming. Uh, we're going to go ahead and jump online, so if anybody needs us, feel free to chat, email, scroll us. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care. Thanks, Audrey. Thanks, Linda. Melanie, Susan, Carmen, Catherine, everybody. Have a good one.